Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I heart Aries, my name is Chelsea, and this is the channel where we do all Aries readings, and I'm so excited to be I'm just I'm like literally so excited to be posting. Um, I still got that little eh in my throat. Man, I'm telling you that I feel a hundred percent. But um, because all we did was sleep, like that's the most amazing thing ever to just be able to literally roll over and go to sleep and wake up and go to sleep and just it, it was I was like, wow, I really needed this. That 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 usually is the time that you get sick is when you are not resting enough, and then spirit is like, lay it down, <laughs> lay it down. Me and my son literally just rotated different spots on the couch. It was nice. But anyways, back to normal now. I still have that little frog in my throat, I guess you want to call it. My voice is not back to normal, but I am 100%. Um, and so, yeah, I couldn't. I mean, it's literally 2.30 a.m. What else is there to do? We have, like, this winter storm. Don't have to leave our house. Don't live, have to leave our houses. Where are we going to go tomorrow? So I'm just like, I'm up. Um recording because I haven't recorded in a long time. I just did an all signs on my new channel, Seven Sisters uh, Tarot. So by the time you watch this, that will be uploaded. A link in the description box for my new channel, Seven Sisters Tarot. So you guys can go check that out. Show your support. So let me see what other updates. Um, we got our new puppy. Some of you who follow us on, uh, follow us, I don't know. Follow me and my son. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. You've seen that we got our new puppy. He's adorable. Um, some of you saw I was like, Pugsley loves him. JK, he hates it. <laughs> okay. Um, so all your new puppy facts, specifically pugs, introducing pugs um to new bees and whatever, all the tips are welcome in the comment section. Please let me know. Um, I mean, it's two boys and I can already tell that little puppy number two, we're still settling on a name. I say Bruno. I mean, pretty much whatever I say goes because I told my son I get to name this one because he named Pugsley. So I really like Bruno. We just haven't stamped it yet. But, um, you know, of course, why, you know. <laughs> from the movie yeah, that's why I thought like Bruno well uh, uh was it what is it was it um we don't talk about Bruno yeah uh we were like my cousin was like what should his middle name be and I was like well Madrigal is I think I'm saying it right Madrigal is too long so it can't be Bruno Madrigal so it'll be Bruno Mars which I know I'm corny okay anyways but that little thing is feisty okay um he's a Tiny. I'm gonna show you guys him tomorrow. Um, I'll, I'll bring him on tomorrow. And I think like, and Pugsley is super aggressive. Like he's just, you know, Pugsley's an alpha. So it's like he wants. Like Pugsley was trying to be gentle with him, but the minute that he seen Bruno's bite back, like get the hell out of my face. <laughs> like Pugsley's like, what? This is my house. So it's. I don't know how this is. This, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm already stressed. I'm just letting y'all know right now. I'm already stressed. Just tell me how long it takes for the adjustment period. Are we talking months here? This is going to be like, I don't know. I think I'm going to put them in like puppy class together because that's one thing I should have did with Pugsley in the beginning and I never did. Um, but yeah, the giveaway is still going on. All right. So if you guys, I think I may come on tomorrow actually. Yeah, it's the 23rd. I'm going to come on tomorrow and do some giveaways. So Christmas Eve um, winners, maybe about three of them. And um, so go ahead and enter in the comment section. The letter. Um, so those of you who don't know, I'm doing a open road Abra Camino ritual for you guys. Okay, for us, the collective, Aries Collective for 2023. Okay, all you have to do is write a letter, and I'm gonna do a brief recap. Um, you're gonna write a letter about how you want your life to be in 2023, right? You're gonna be writing it to someone, telling them, hey, you'll never believe where I'm at in life right now. All these wonderful things are happening to me, and da da da. Now, I put a link in the comment section 
of the videos that describe this ritual and the letter, right? So you can go there and, and, and read that. Um, I'm going to tell you this. All you have to do is go to the video that says Afro Camino Road Opener Ritual and put your name one time. Okay, let me just tell you, some people are going there and putting their name multiple times. This is not a who gets most. This is this is a ritual, okay? You only need to be there once, okay? If I see your name twice, I'm not going to write it twice, okay? I have a parchment paper, petition paper that your name will go on. I only need your one name one time. So, because I see some people are putting their name again. Don't put your name more than once. I just need it once, okay? There's a lot of people already. I think we almost have close to 300 people who are going, who are doing this. I, I feel like this is going to be very powerful just because of the energy of all of you going into this, right? Um, so put your name on that um, video by December 30th because that's the cutoff because that's when I'm going to start preparing everything. So whoever's name I have, I have, all right? Um, whew, okay, so I just finished doing an all signs. Let's see here. I'm going to put this video starts at, we'll say, 6.30. And I just wanted to do, um, what do you need to know right now? All right. But do a Celtic cross. All right. So what's the main situation that comes out? This is technically, this is the new moon in Capricorn. We are in that energy. I kept getting an urge to write my letter. And I'm like, I said I was going to do it on the new moon. And I looked down and I was like, wait, it is the new moon. So um, this is a great time to write that letter for the ritual during this new moon. All right, so let's see here. Aries, sun, moon, Venus, and rising. What is the situation that you need to know about right now? What do you need information on the most? Holy Spirit, spirits, and angels, please allow me to become a situation for Aries, sun, moon, Venus, and rising. Okay. So Aries, you got dog, close up. Pleasure with a close friend, all right? You have pale, time to get out of a situation. You have the heels, obstacles to overcome. You have angel, spiritual guidance, protection from harm. I tell you guys, this card always comes out when there is a threat of some sort. So you are protected. And we have dark man, okay? Dealings or relationship with a man with dark complexion or hair. I also say the energy that I always get from this card is that it could be a dark complected person, somebody with a tan, olive skin, black, whatever. But I also, I always identify with this as someone who's in a darker energy, okay? Maybe lower vibration, but maybe darker energy. So, and that does not surprise me because the angel came out. So spiritual protection from someone. Um, protection from harm. Um, somebody could be trying to create obstacles for you or throw obstacles in your direction. This could just be life in general, right? Doesn't have anything to do with anybody else, but there's a man here, all right? We have time to get out of a situation. We got toil and labor. What else do we have here? Ooh, we have marriage. What is this situation about with Aries, Sun, Moon, Venus, and Rising? What is the situation with Aries, Sun, Moon, Venus, and Rising? You have wealthy man. Ooh, I didn't know the last come out. Good. Ooh, okay, Aries. You got unexpected income. All right, so what I'm getting here strongly is that there's a situation that is holding you back in some capacity. Whether you're in a relationship with a dark man or a dark person, or you're still connected to someone on an energetic level, and Spirit is saying it's time for you to get out of that situation. It's time for you to bail on that situation, literally, all right? Because these obstacles that you need to overcome are going to be a lot easier to overcome once you're out of this situation. I feel that these obstacles could even be obstacles because you're in this situation, okay? Um, so Aries, there's something here I want to use. 
drop that. My deck. All right. Let's see what comes out. Marriage, wealthy man, unexpected income. That just looks like to me, up, up, up. All right. So it's like once you get out of a situation here, it's up. It's, if it's, are you got to say, if it's up, then it's stuck, <laughs> okay? And some of you could be stuck in something. Money, money coming in, stop worrying. So unexpected income, toil and labor here. Some of you could be very much so, feel like you're spending your wills, working very hard on something and, and you feel like you're not really getting anywhere. It could be because you are stuck in a situation that it's time for you to get out of. See, drugs or addictions are involved. Um, so there could be somebody that you've connected with. If, I mean, if this is you, then you know, this is you Aries, but this could be somebody here that you're connected with who has an addiction issue, could have a drug problem. And, you know, that's why we have that dark man energy. It could be a dark female too. Um, I just saw 11, 11. So, and you know, you need to disconnect from this person. Maybe you've already disconnected from them, but it could be an energetic thing. Wow. You got marriage twice. Okay. Marriage twice. Marriage is definitely in the cards for someone here in Aries. And I want to say this because this is carrying over from my seven sisters tarot. And that could be for any sign. But if you have Pisces somewhere in your chart, definitely marriage is in the cards for you. Okay. Um, marriage is in the cards for you. I got that earlier. Very strongly. Okay. So let's see here. There it is. Ooh, it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, dark entity present and protection work is needed. They came out together. At the bottom of the deck, new beginnings. Ace of Pentacles and the heart. Guidance from your ancestors. Promotion. Let me tell you, Aries, someone is trying to stop you. And I mean, they don't even have to be doing anything like candles and stuff like that it could just be their envy or their rage their i don't want to say jealousy but that word was about to come out but i'm also hearing not wanting to let you go okay there could be some sort of energetic cord that needs to be cut or broken but there is a and i told you what did i say then this card comes out it kind of represents a darker person darker energy and there we have a dark entity present definitely that could go along with the drugs are involved in the addictions when people open their i mean addiction addictions is a spirit it's a spirit you know some people say it's a health issue it's a you know and i do not disagree because there are some i will say some mental illnesses are a spirit right but that those drugs and those addictions open up a portal or passageway or how do you want to say it? it opens up your aura right and allows you to be susceptible to dark entities okay and so somebody you just could be somebody that you're connected with a lover somebody is, is 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 they got them okay some dark entity has them attached to them in them operating through them is what i'm hearing okay like so they could have been addicted to some sort of drugs or alcohol for a very long time and so now this person is literally being controlled by that dark entity okay like half of their decision making is them half of the decision making is this dark entity it overcomes them it succumbs to me have protection work is needed Mm. Yeah, look at that. See, we got thief at the bottom of the deck and lovers. Imprisonment. So this person could have a record, jail, bad health. Ooh, Aries. Let me see. Protection, protection, protection. Tell me, give us one more here. Thank you. Lovers and friends. What was that? Something just flashed in my phone. Um we got lovers and friends. We're going to pull on that card and see what that's about. Let's pull on that before we get to the Celtic cross. Oh, did I open my button? I don't know. Bear with me, guys. Holy Spirit, please. 
So this could be a situation where somebody started out as a, let me see here, judgment. Mm, thank you, spirit. Got it. The chariot. And the six of swords. I got it immediately when the judgment came out, but the chariot and the six of swords absolutely, absolutely clarified this. So Aries, you got the judgment, you got the chariot and the six of swords. I just got chills. Like literally just got chills. Let me tell you, it's not just, for some of you, it's not just this lover. It is lovers and friends. It is a plethora of people, collective of people around you. This could have just been like how you grew up. You know what I'm saying? I know like around where my grandmother is, where I was raised some of the time, something like that. It's just in our community, right? We see addicts. We see this, we see that, but there are people that are close to you that, and especially I'm going to speak for the black community that we don't really think as, they're not bad people, right? I'm saying they're not bad people. They have problems, they have issues, they have this and that, whatever. And I know there's some people, every time I go to my grandmother's neck of the woods where she used to live, they're on the corner. They're hanging out. They're like family. Hey, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? We've seen them our whole lives. But you have, and, but the thing is, you usually get away from that. You don't live in that. You're not connected to that. So you may be, and what I'm trying to get is that some of you or someone may be desensitized to someone around them who has a habit, who is low vibrational who maybe you've been friends with since the beginning of time, since you were kindergarten, first grade, whatever. Um, and maybe they've picked up a habit. Maybe they have do something, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what it is, but Spirit is saying it's lovers and friends that need to kind of be, I've heard exiled or, um, what's that word? E no, not that word. Um, <laughs> um, you know what I'm trying to say, e exercise, exercise or, and when I'm saying that, I mean, out of your life, I'm not telling nobody to perform any exorcisms unless that's what you wanted to do. Um, but take it out of your life. All right. The judgment here is saying it's time to make a, de a final decision. All right. Maybe you have to revisit the situation, go over it again, but whatever you do, when you make that judgment call, base it off of the facts. Okay, base it off of what you know about these people, what you know about them bringing to your life, what you've already seen. Base it off of the facts. The chariot is saying, when you move away from this, when you make the decision to move away from them, you'll have more success in your life. And some of you will have a lot more mental clarity. Some of you, the problems will stop. Some of you, the arguments will stop. Some of you, the confusion will stop, unfortunately. And so that may be a very heartbreaking thing because you may have a lot of love or compassion for these people. You may have worked on this relationship with the toil and labor, very hard to keep it afloat. But your, your, your ancestors are speaking to you and they're telling you that this person or people are robbing you of opportunities and elevation. Now, from the time being, you're protected. But the thing is, once you become aware of something and you continue to choose that or you continue to stay in something after you're aware of something, then you're continuing to choose it, all right? You're choosing that path for you. You're choosing that outcome for you. And essentially, you're giving up a lot of blessings, right? Someone here is destined to be married. We got married here twice. This could be you as the wealthy man. You could be meeting a wealthy man or a wealthy woman. And you could be having abundance of money coming in. And by staying connected to people that because you grew up with them or because they love you so much, you're going to you're going to fail yourself. You're going to have no one to blame but yourself. And I have to tell you this, I have to tell you this. I know it's not easy for everyone to break out of relationships like that. It's difficult, especially when you love people like that. There could be some codependency on your part if you're not able to look at this and say, hey, this is hurting me. I need to create distance with this person. I need to create distance with these people. If you're unable to do that and you know that it's hurting you, I have to tell you that's codependent, okay? Because of the fact that you're addicted to this person. You may not think of it as an addiction, 
But if you can't walk away from someone that's hurting you, it's an addiction, okay? Whether it's a friend, um, whether it's a family member, whether it's a lover. If you cannot walk away from someone that is abusing you, hurting you, misusing you, taking your love for granted in the worst way where I'm talking about it actually hurts you, then you have some form of codependency, okay? Um, it could change, okay? I'm telling you, it could change. I've been there. I've been in codependent relationships myself, all right? It can change, but the first step is self-awareness. You have to identify the problem. You have to know what you're in. You have to know what you're up against. You cannot be in denial, okay? Um, but there's something here that seems to be blocking that you keep. It looks like with the toil and labor, you're working very hard to make it stay, keep it afloat. All right. Now, some of you, this is going to be different for everyone. It could be a relationship with love, with a friend, with a family member. But you're doing your damnedest to keep this afloat. You shouldn't have to work that hard. That's the first. That's the first clue. You shouldn't have to work that hard. Relationships they take work, absolutely. But if they're based off genuine, true love, they're going to float by themselves. Okay? They're going to stay afloat. All right. Let's see here. What does Spirit want us to tell us about this situation? All right. So if you're working on a relationship with somebody who calls them a free agent, calls himself a free agent, I do what I want when I want mentality, then you're in a relationship by yourself. You're putting a lot of effort and a lot of work in a relationship where this person is saying they're a free agent. They're going to take on anybody that they want to take on whenever they want to take on it. And here you are working your damnedest to keep this relationship afloat. That's step one where you need to go ahead and leave. All right. Somebody here. Ooh, well, there it is. Somebody could be in jail. Okay. We got jail time. Another reason that you need to disconnect from them. If this is not in alignment with you, why are you connected to them? Now, granted, people go to jail, right? My father's been in jail. He's been incarcerated before many years. He came out of jail and turned his life around, right? To where he didn't have to work for anybody. So I'm not saying everybody has a story. Everybody has, I'm not saying they're a terrible person because they went to jail, but there is some dark energy and dark entity here. And I'm telling you this, spell work involved. All right, magical practice is being used to influence the thoughts and or actions of a person or situation. Now, let me tell you, if they're sitting in jail, they're thinking about you, obsessing about you, they don't need no candle, all right? Um, but especially with this dark entity present, protection work is needed, there is someone throwing something at you. Also, what I'm getting with this jail time is that it doesn't have to be a physical jail. I say this all the time. This could be some sort of mental prison. And unfortunately, sometimes it's the worst type where somebody is stuck in their head obsessing about you, okay? That creates some sort of spell work as well. They're obsessing about you. Then especially if it's somebody with a dark entity attached to them. Now they're laser focused on you and they're obsessing on how to get in your energy, maybe how to attach themselves to you, maybe even how to harm you, okay? So definitely protection work is needed. And we got intentional pregnancy, all right? So planned pregnancy, sex with intentions of conceiving a child. So now somebody's trying to trap you, all right? Now somebody's trying to trap you. Somebody who said they're a free agent, that, you know, they're for the streets, they can do whatever they want, but you can't. I'm just telling you right now, and let me just tell you, let's say this too, men, it happens every day. We see it all the time where women try to get pregnant without, I'm mean, going to say without your knowledge because obviously you're doing it, but without your consent. I'm saying you could wear a condom and somebody didn't did something to the condom. It's intentional pregnancy, right? A man did everything they were supposed to do, even though every time you engage in sex, you know, there's a percentage that somebody could get pregnant. But they, I've heard stories like that from my own male friends, okay? So be careful because there's someone, even if it says dark man, it could be a dark female, whatever, who has ill intentions about making you attached to them because they have a dark entity present. Okay. 
Um, they're using spell work. They're using all kinds of methods and whatever tactics to keep you stuck. Um, with the pail, I'm going to say this, this keeps popping out. It's time to get out of this situation. It's time to get out of the situation. Even if you're like texting this person because you don't want to be mean and just cut them off. So you're just texting the person and you're like, I'm just, you know, I just throw them on the bone and nah, cut that off, cut it off quick and swift. All right. Stop feeling sorry for people who wouldn't feel sorry for you. I keep seeing bisexual or same sex interest at the bottom of the deck. So that could be for somebody. And look at that gold digger. Engaging in relationships for money instead of love. Cut that off. At the bottom of the deck, baby, please don't go in reverse. Direct message to you from your person's energy. So they're going to beg. They're going to plead. They're going to do whatever they can take, but it's probably not genuine. Even if it is coming from a place of desperately not wanting you to go, it's because it's something that you could do for them. Money. Okay. Um, codependency. You got blessings. I don't know who I'm speaking to. Look at this sun at the bottom. You got blessings coming in. And the spirit is saying the only thing you need to do really, I mean, you may want to do a cord cutting ritual, but the only thing you really need to do is move away from this, this person, this energy, this entity. Okay. It's the only thing you really need to do is move away from it. All right, spirit, tell us how Aries would know who this person is. Nine of Wands. The Four of Cups. And the Five of Wands. <laughs> Three of Swords in reverse. First of all, they bring drama, conflict, and strife into your life, right? This has been an ongoing cycle with the Nine of Wands here. It has been hurt after hurt after hurt, but for whatever reason, you guys still continue to hold on to it. Nine of Wands is a codependent energy as well. It's perseverance, but in this aspect, it's someone not letting go. You know what I'm getting here as well? It's like, it's like almost, a, this may resonate for somebody. It's like, this person may have seen you struggling to hold on to the connection and they purposely ignore you, right? They purposely ignore you or you may have ignored this person. And when every time that happens, they fight for the connection or they try to throw some drama in there just to get you reattached or restuck. Okay. That's for someone, but how, you know, who this is, there is a, there's a struggle energy. There's a struggle energy. Nine of Wands. We got fire and water energy here. This person could be literally struggling in life. Okay. Um, this person could also have unresolved issues, unresolved wounds that they refuse to heal or get help for. This person could be, you know, see you as a missed opportunity with the Four of Cups. Or like every time you offered them love, they disregarded it. This could be somebody here that puts you in third party situations, three of swords in reverse, and the five of wands puts you in competition with others. All right. What is this person's future actions to Aries, if any? Ace of swords, communication. Page of cups, more messages. And the Ten of Pentacles. All right. So Aries, they're going to try to come in. Tell me about the Ten of Pentacles. They're going to try to come in and King of Cups. They're going to try to come in and offer you a relationship. They're going to try to come in and offer you marriage. One, for one, some of you see, some of them see you as a victory, as a win. Okay. Just by being with you. Ace of Swords, they may try to come in and tell you the truth about something, but it's going to be a little bit of the truth, just enough for you to open up emotionally so they can get you where they want you. All right. That, but their next, their next actions towards you is going to be communication, whether you heard this from this person or not from a long time, communication, some sort of emotional message here to try to get you open, but then they're going to come in and lay it on thick with the King of Cups here 
and the Ten of Cups. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, Energy. Some of you, may, they may even propose marriage. Okay. They may even propose marriage. Let's see here. Aries, how do you feel? Ooh, Empress. You're in your Empress energy. Self-love, elevation. You feel about this Ten of Swords. Ooh. How does Aries feel about this Seven of Cups? Ooh. Page of Wands, Queen of Swords, and the Nine of Swords. You're in your, first of all, you're in your Empress energy. So male or female, now you're choosing, you're choosing you. You're choosing to love yourself. You're elevating yourself. You're putting yourself on the pedestal that you should have always been on. You do not chase, you attract. So you're seeing your worth now, okay? You're taking better care of yourself, especially after some sort of betrayal or painful ending from this situation. And you see this as another painful ending, right? Something here that was full of illusions and someone here had many options. I think you're going to communicate back, but you're going to tell them, right? No. <laughs> okay. Queen of Swords, you're putting your sword up. What did you say? Mind over heart. Okay. Even if you still have love for this person, with the Queen of Swords energy, you're making an intelligent decision here to protect yourself. Maybe even protect your children. For some of you, you may have children with this person already. With intentional pregnancy, the page of page of wands here. And the nine of swords. I feel like some of you are going to, you may have forgiven, but you're never going to forget the energy that this person put you in with the nine of swords. Okay. The nine of swords energy is very stressed out, anxious, worried, um, a lot of anxiety. So that's how you're gonna choose that. And you know what? When you put your boundaries up. And when you, with this nine of wands inner, you put these boundaries up and you put yourself on your pedestal, right? When you stop settling for less is when the divine finally brings in what you deserve. And so that's all you really have to do here is make a decision to move away from this situation. And you will have peace and you will have success in other aspects of your life, especially love, and you will start to get the things that you want. Nine of Cups energy. You will start to receive your wish, your wishes. When you become selfish, you have that is a part of self love. You know, I don't know who made the whole, you know, connotation that being selfish is a negative thing. And some people, gaslighters, will use that on you and say, you're so selfish, you're so selfish. Those are the people who want you to break down your walls and open up for them. So they could be selfish, but you can't, right? Being selfish is necessary sometimes to protect your peace. It definitely is. Putting yourself first is not selfish, it's self-love. Okay? Um, because if you're loving yourself first, you're gonna have plenty of love to give to the people who deserve it. You cannot give from an empty cup. So that's what I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed your reading. Take care.